I welcome you all to this standing rock, to this rock that was formed by all of you, that you have all um, completed a wonderful and holy mission of supporting this place and supporting the mission and supporting uh, what we try to do here at the Hope Interface Center. And I know when most of you go home, because I know many of you very, very clearly, that you stand on a rock as well when you're home. Um, because of your values and because of your morals and because of your brightness of each and every one of your hands. I was, uh, had an opportunity, it's nice to be back, and the reason why I wanted to sit is because I feel a lot of energy, I'm just feeling a lot of energy. And I'm feeling a lot of emotion, which we all do during this time. We all do um, during this time. And I just completed last weekend a wonderful, wonderful retreat at the Holy Spirit Retreat Center, um, which is an end of the year retreat. And it was intimate and close and real and raw. And we shared the gift of tears and laughter and avocados on our face. <laughs> and watching a movie. And so what we talked a lot about is that this is what we all really want. We all want intimacy. And um, when I was writing this up, or looking at it, and because my husband says, so what is the, what is the sermon going to be about? And I said, well, certainly it's blessing the, the peacemakers. But one part of it was called losing the cape. And he goes, what? Losing the what? Because I was downstairs going out. He goes, losing the what? And I said, losing the cape. And I said, just, just come and, um, and just hear. And the two books that I read while I was gone was called The Love Warrior, which I happen to love as a woman who's been through bulimia and trying to find herself and uh, been through compulsive overeating and been through the addiction of uh, not very good thoughts about myself and perhaps even not very good thoughts about other people and that there was a resurrection in her life and it took a lot of love for herself to become that love warrior to come up and so um, this was for me a, a really really a good book. My husband started reading it for him and he even said it was a bit painful and so he had to put it down and to pick it up again. And he started asking me what it did. It stimulated conversations. And he said, so tell me, when did you stop bulimia? And I says, I don't know. No, you know, when did you, when did you stop? And I says, well, someplace in our marriage. And I thought that would be good enough. He says, well, was it in the first part, second part, now part? What part was it? And I said, I don't know, someplace in the first part. And it didn't go any further than that. I think perhaps he was surprised that it was still going on in our marriage. Because we all uh, struggle with um, finding ourselves. And I loved, 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 loved the poem. Um, we all struggle in finding ourselves, knowing ourselves. And the biggest thing, just as we talked about during the retreat, is that we just want to be loved. Everybody just wants to be loved. And everybody deserves to be loved. For who we are, what we are. And one of the things is that I heard during another sermon that I attended was, on the worst of the worst of the worst of your days, if you do not hear over your shoulder, You are my beloved. I love you. If you do not hear on the worst of your days, no matter what you have done, you are my beloved. And I love you. Because that's what God's love is about. That is what love is on the worst of the worst of the worst of our days. We are being asked to look over each other's shoulders and say, you are my beloved. And 
I will just love you. Everything. Totally. Emotion. And that's what I love about the people who come to the Hope Interfaith Center as you're sitting here. You are the peacemakers. This is what I love it when Amy comes in and I say, don't worry. You're at the Hope Interfaith Center. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes extra uh, to um, the retreat, and oh, I didn't RSVP, don't have a checkbook. That's okay, you're at the Hope Interfaith Center. Because our job is to love each other. And we are very, very capable of doing that. The other book that I read was from my daughter, and it was called Love Does by Bob Goff. And we have an interfaith family. We have Muslims, we have Hispanics, we have Zen Buddhists, we have um, uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter is very Christian orientated, and I love the fact that we have this beautiful mix um, just even in our family. And so this is what, when I read this, the, the, the best chapter I read was called Lose the Cave. And it was about the peacemakers, and it was about the people who are awesome and will never receive an award. It is about the awesome givers and caretakers and helpers that will never have an opportunity to stand on stage and be applauded by thousands, by hundreds, by even 50 people. And you are those awesome beings. And so one of the things that when he talks about um, is about losing the cape, and I love this. Lose the cape. That is the point, I think, is that you can get a lot more stuff done without a cape. I think Jesus agreed. It seems like every time Jesus did an incredible thing, he would say something similar to the people nearby. He raised a little girl from the dead, and what did he say? Tell no one. He met a guy with leprosy and healed him and said, tell no one. He healed two guys who were blind, and he gave them one great order before moving on. Say nothing to anyone. In a world driven by self-promotion and spin, Jesus modeled something different for us all. Jesus was saying that instead of telling people about what you're doing all the time, that there's a better way. One that doesn't require any capes that can get snagged on something, something like ourselves. Maybe Jesus wants us to be secretly incredible instead. That was his plan for self-promotion. Secretly incredible people keep what they do, and yet they do the best. Because the only one who needs to know is the universe. And the universe already knows how unique and incredible you all are. <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> Being secretly incredible goes against the trend that says do anything incredible and you have to tell the world about it. You can start an organization, have a mission statement, and labor endlessly over a statement of faith. Secretly incredible people just do things. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. You want a mission statement to go along with being secretly incredible? Okay, here it is. Just be awesome. Tis the season to be jolly. Ba la 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 la. 
the children upstairs are hearing the story of Jesus, of baby Jesus. And as my children grow, and as my grandchildren grow, and when people come, I talk about the man of Jesus Christ and what he did and how he performed miracles and how we perform miracles right here, right now, here today. Just be awesome. That's it. If you want to follow Jesus' example of how he did things, that's probably all we write down instead of our otherwise heady statements. But there's more. <clears throat> I don't think Jesus wants us to make a fashion statement either, or be edgy, or promote ourselves in the backs of clothing or bracelets all the time. I think instead, Jesus just wants us to write, be awesome on an undershirt, <laughs> or it will never, ever, ever, ever be seen anyone about what he had done. He just did it. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. A hello. A hug. A handshake. Is a peacemaker. I think sometimes we feel like we need to do something big a courtesy call to someone who is homeless or is in shelter because they don't have a home. Writing cards to people in prison. Cutting out newspaper clips of somebody who did awesome. Send them a card. Every single person who ran for city council, the Hope Interface sent a card. Mark Vian, the mayor of Mark Mankato, you're awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> the 95-year-old who's in the paper, cut it out. Congratulations. You made it to 95 years old. That's awesome. You're awesome. You got to be awesome to live to 95. <laughs> Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. Every single day, all of you have moved mountains. You don't have to do anything to be any more awesome than what you already are. Because when you already know that you are awesome, some people get upset. You don't have to do anything more to be awesome. Because you're already awesome. That beloved voice, that's God, goddess, spirit, oneness, whatever you want to call it, just thinks you're awesome. And if we tell each other we're awesome because you're just awesome, Then you do more. You give more. You can move mountains. That is what we're called to do. And as those little children upstairs, because I know one of them quite well, <laughs> Margretta, I says, oh, you're going to be hearing this story about baby Jesus. And she goes, ah. Uh, I just love babies. <laughs> she said, you think there's going to be a real baby, Grandma? But now it's way too cold for babies. But I said, you're going to learn about a baby who's born. And you're going to learn about a woman named Mary who rode on a donkey, cold. And the reason why I asked Michelle and Teresa to sing with me Away in a Manger is because I was thinking about that song. Um, this awesome, really couple, Mary and 
Joseph, and being pregnant, and then this baby being born in a manger, who did so much. The story still lives. That's in us. It goes into this crib that is filled with straw. It's probably stinky. And the animals are all there. All of that stuff is there. And wasn't he awesome? We are him. And he is us. Wasn't Mother Mary awesome? She was awesome before she gave birth. Mother Mary is us. And we are Mother Mary. Wasn't Joseph being told, you are going to be the father? And he goes, huh? And I love the story that I think Joel Olstein says that after Joseph falls to the floor and faints, and Mary picks him up and says, no, well, you know, you are going to be the father of a child that we will call Jesus. Faith. He was awesome. We are awesome. As we go closer and closer, two weeks away, Christmas Day, New birth. A new dawn. Many endings have happened. Many things and tragedies have happened. Many shifts are taking place. We are standing on a standing rock. Michelle, you're standing on a standing rock. Paul Mormon, you're standing on a standing rock. Val, you're standing. Just think of what you've gone through. You are standing on a standing rock. Everyone here has gone through something deep, difficult, and it might even still be going on. And somehow you made it to this room and you're still standing. And you're standing on a rock of faith. And you are that rock of truth. And I can hardly wait to hear what's going to happen as we move in to 2017. And as you continue to come to the Hope Interface Center, and I hope that you do, my, my true aim because I was a lot like this. Once, I didn't think I was awesome. And I hung around a bunch of people then who didn't think they were awesome. But so then we talked about that we weren't really that awesome. Now, I talk to people who really know that they're awesome because they did go through this and they are still going through this whatever that is within you. And the birth on the Christmas morning is my wish for you and the Hope Interfaith Center that either someone who hears this story write awesome on an undershirt, wrap it up, and give it to them. That's what you get, Paul. A new Christmas present. Get those undershirts out. <clears throat> Write awesome on the inside and wear it underneath your clothes. And every once in a while, when you go in the bathroom, <laughs> open it up <laughs> and have that celebration of knowing that you are awesome. Um, so at this time, what I would like us to do is as we bring those awesome kids down and as we listen to awesome Amy do awesome <laughs> art, that um, you can feel the energy of hope and love and light that the brilliancy of this season can bring and does bring to all of us.